Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1.6 scale Cadillac Gauge V100 Armor Car, also known as the XM706. Since the last video update, a large portion of the vehicle's side work is now completed. A lot of the fittings were designed, tooled up, and have been fitted to the vehicle at this time. We're going to be going ahead and going over all of these detail fittings and additions in this video. So stay tuned because there's going to be a lot of cool info coming right at you. To kick this video off takes us directly to the upper hull sections over here where we have some bodywork being done to these locations. As I touched upon in a few of the earlier videos for this project, one thing that's unique about the V100 is with the way the hull plates are welded together, you have these overhangs found on several of the extremities. They're found, of course, most notably on the front, the rear, but on the sides run right along the top portion here, and it continues from this portion, and it goes all the way around to the opposite side. With the camera readjusted, you get to see what the piece looks like with the rib added in place. For the rib, I went with the exact same procedure that I touched upon in the earlier video, and I actually showed it in more depth in those videos. So going ahead and repeating the process with showing the, the application, it's not really necessary. As for the quick touch-up though, this is done by adding a thin little strip of plastic plastic strip to these extremities here. They are CA to the side of the hull and then putty is added to the top portion, sanded smooth, giving you the look that would be appropriate for the real vehicle. For the strips themselves, as a quick update, it's this one right here, which is Evergreen Styrene number 143. The Styrene is nice and thin, it does have the correct appearance to it, and most importantly, it bends really easily on things like these angle sections that we have here and here. Of course, more of this is going to be used for the remainder of the hatch wells, but I'm gonna to touch upon more of that as the video progresses. The entire top extremities have been polished down with the use of sandpaper and a final once over was done with wet sanding just to make sure everything blends in nice and smooth. As you can see, this is going to generate a lot of powder, but you know, you're not doing a scratch build correct unless you have a ton of putty powder lying around. The strip was also added to the very front plate here, giving that nice sharp leading edge, which is present on the real vehicle. And of course, the putty was sanded down in order to make everything nice and seamless. From here, I'm gonna take the entire model outside just so I could dust it off, get all this red crap off the model and definitely out of the shop. From there, we're gonna bounce back to the side hull area because with the top sections out of the way, it's now time to start digging into the hatches and the other side hull detailing, which is going to be needed to carry this model further closer to the finish line. The first thing I'm gonna do is punch out the hole over here for the side engine axis hatch. I already have the printed hatch on hand and I marked it with a pencil where exactly it goes. And more importantly, I marked out the center that needs to be cut out. The hatch itself needs a little lip so that the thing can rest on. So I went ahead and incorporated that right here with this inner line that you can see here that's been scribbled with the pencil. From this point, I'm gonna start making the holes to knock it out, and here you see I went ahead and did several pilot holes, and then from there, I'm just going to use the router bit to just connect the dots, so to speak, and then once each of the dots are connected, the entire piece just plunk right out. With the hole cut out of the engine area and also with the handle holes that were originally drilled in puttied over and going through their process, I'm now turning my attention to the main side hatch area of the model. As I mentioned in a previous video where I talk about the rear hatch area, the side hatch area was done in a similar manner by the 
individual who started the model, where he went ahead and cut out the locations here on the sides of the hull, but he went ahead and made the hatch detailing just static pieces that glued directly over these two areas here. Fortunately, just like with the rear hatch, the side hatches here are basically where they need to be position-wise. So I'm not going to mess with them too much in that regard. What I am going to need to do is to lengthen them, or I should say widen them, and also shorten the top section over here so it better mates with my new design hatch. Something else that I had to do was clean up the inside portion over here. All right pivot the model hopefully you get to see a little bit of what's going on with the way the model is designed you have a lot of internal structure found along the various points on the inside and one of the points is right here on the corner where the door needs to line up in this area this is really important because there are some latches that are found on the lower section of the door which are needed because this is what actually keeps the thing closed and obviously they need to work so the area over here was cleaned up with a Dremel, with a cutting stone, as well as with a sanding drum, just to remove as much of the material as possible that was interfering. That's basically done at this point. So the next thing to do is to work with the overall dimensions of the side hatch hole itself. With the camera off the tripod, you probably get a good idea on the quality of the cut that I'm going to be working with. The cut itself is a bit on the coarser side, which makes sense because the individual didn't refine it further because he just slapped those two non-functional hatches over this area over here. This is going to be cleaned up a little bit because if we notice it is cut in an angle, and obviously it's not exactly a straight line, so this is something I'm going to have to polish up with the Dremel. I went ahead and placed the 3D printed hatch over this area here and I marked it with a pencil just so I have a good idea on where the outer perimeter of the hatch is going to be found. And then from here, once I start the cleanup, I could figure out where the internal cutout needs to be so that when the hatch closes, it closes flush against the side of the vehicle. So now that the hole is completely enlarged, it's time to fine tune it to get it to better fit the hatches. As I may have touched upon before, the top portion is far too tall, so I'm gonna to have to plug this area up with some material. You'll notice at this point here, I went ahead and glued across the gap a piece of Plastruct strip. If anyone wants to know the purpose of this, well, if you've seen the other videos, you'll know exactly why. But long story short, this is to act as a backing so when I cut the new piece of plastic out and glue it in place, it doesn't overextend and it sits nice and flush with the remainder of the plate. The next thing to do is to fill up this gap over here. And what I'm going to need to do is I need to know exactly how big this piece of material has got to be as well as the shape itself so that I could hand fit it and get it in place. I went ahead and marked on the hull over here with a square, the line which is the cutoff for the hatch. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some paper, line it up, and then with a pencil I'm going to go ahead and mark the edges where the hull are going to be present. Once I have those edges marked down with pencil, I now have a guide and this piece gets cut out and gets turned into a template to where I could transfer it to plastic and from there I could progress with the remainder of the bodywork.
So here's the frame all polished down now. As far as I can feel, the bodywork is nice and smooth and I don't feel any sort of interruptions or shifts between the plate found on the remainder of the hull and the new addition that I just added. Of course, I'm going to take it outside after the rest of the sanding is done, hit this with some primer just to verify that all the bodywork is completed, but so far I'm having some really good feelings about this. So, with this one done, I'm also working on the one on the opposite side, but that one required a little bit more reconstructive work, which you'll see once I flip the vehicle over. So aside from adding the top portion here, like what was done on the other side, this hatch hole here was slightly larger in comparison. And because of that, some more reconstructive work was required on the lower portion here. This was done using the same techniques that I used up here, only for the side section. I went ahead and built it up with eighth inch thick plastruct square stock, which I just overlaid on top of the edging. And once the glue set, I was able to polish it down and I'm still finishing off the remainder on the bottom portion here. Soon as the putties are fully set, I could then hit this with the sandpaper and it'll be a mirror image like we saw on the opposite side. So after the doorway is all cleaned up, the next thing I'm turning my attention to are these various areas here on the side of the hull and the same is also true from the opposite side. These areas are for the vision blocks as well as the pistol ports which are littered all over the side of the V100 vehicle. For a quick recap, the original builder went ahead and incorporated all these details into the model. However, the detailing on them was, you know, rather simplistic as what was true for the remainder of the vehicle's details that I already mentioned. I went ahead and tooled up new variants of all these sections here and they are going to be fitted to the vehicle momentarily. However, with the way the builder installed these components, he went ahead and scored the areas with a X-Acto knife and then the pieces were simply glued on top. Of course, this is a procedure that is commonly done, and even though, admittedly, that's not a procedure that I necessarily do as much, it is a valid procedure nonetheless. But the problem is, is that with the pieces removed, and since I'm going to be replacing them, the newer components are slightly different with their geometry compared to the old ones, and the locations may also need to be changed as well. So with those areas being gouged with the scoring, it's definitely going to lead to a few issues. So before I could go ahead and start mapping out and cutting out the locations where the new sections are going to go, I need to go ahead and plug them up with the bodywork, which is what you see right here. The putty is fully dry, so I'm going to go ahead and sand them down with the same type of procedures and steps that I've touched upon several times in not just this video, but also in the other videos in this series. So let's go ahead and cut across to when that's all completed so we could get to the next step, which is actually the fun part where I'm starting to install all these new fixings. But however, before I cut across to the new components that are going to be added, let's take the moment to really appreciate the bodywork that was done to this area over here. As you can see, it is completely flawless. There are no traces or lumps of putty or plastic whatsoever to indicate that any sort of reconstruction was completed. Same is also true for the model on the opposite side, where it was actually even more of a reconstruction job due to the bottom portion that I touched upon earlier. But as you can see, it's all thoroughly blended in. As are those locations that I mentioned before with the visors as well as the pistol ports. So with the bodywork completed on the sides, that brings us to the next leg of this build, which is to start filling out all of the detail fittings that are present on this portion of the model. And to start that off, we have the following bit of equipment that is seen here on the table. This is the V100 side rear engine hatch. What's interesting to point out is that when the V100 was first designed, it was emitting this feature that we have here. And those vehicles just have the side portion that's totally smooth without any sort of access into the engine, with the exception of the two main engine hatches that are on, well, the top deck. Well, shortly after these units were in production and were being fielded, one of the requests that was made was to have some other access into the vehicle's engine compartment via the side of the hull, and that's where this design comes from. All of the other V100s from that point onward featured the setup that we have here. This particular unit here is a new addition to the EastCoastArmory.com product line, although the production unit is going to be slightly different from this pattern here with the materials that they are made from. This one here is made out of a resin print, while the actual production units are made out of the standard white nylon that's seen on a majority of the other components. 
because of the material difference, the details are going to be somewhat different on this particular example, how they get assembled, but the details themselves are going to be the same found on the production units. So let's start with this portion over here, which is the hinge and the guard area. The engine hatch is just like with the other side hatches on this vehicle, where there's a little armored ring that surrounds the hatch itself. The ring has a bevel to it, which is seen on this example here, but also what's seen are the weld beads that are found in these locations. The weld beads are integrally printed on, so once the unit is secured to the model, no other work needs to be done by the builder to improve the detail or the accuracy. Basically, once it's installed, you have the detailing ready to go. Here you can see the hinges. They are pre-drilled out, or printed hollow, I should say. And the piece, just a simple frame, and it drops right where it needs to go. The hatch itself has the appropriate size and shape. The handle is integrally printed on, along with its weld beads. And on, on that note, you can see the hinges have their appropriate shape, as well as their weld beads, too. On the interior portion, it is a pretty simplistic piece. There aren't any other real details going on on the inside here. It's not like some other hatches where they have the interior wells with welds and all that other good stuff. On this one, the only real detail found is with this area over here where there's this protrusion sticking up that is actually welded to the plate. And this protrusion is for the locking lever that secures this thing in the closed position on the side of the vehicle. For those details, that's consisting of the following parts that we have right here. This here is the protrusion that I was referencing before. Note it has the weld present. And on this particular example, it is a separate piece that gets plugged into this area over here, thus completing the unit. For the production units, this is going to be integrally printed on. So this is something that you're not going to have to worry about as the builder. The handle itself, again, it's a 3D printed part. It's basically the exact same handle that's found on the side and rear hatches. Because, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And this here is just a retention fastener that has a washer integrally printed on as true to form. And this basically just secures everything together. So from here, all these pieces are going to be assembled, painted, and secured to the model. However, this is not the only bit of detailing that we're going to be touching upon because there's some more stuff that's going to come, well, right now. And here we have the next batch of parts, which are the V100 side hatches. The components that you see here are pretty much ironed out, with the exception of you'll see that a few of the pieces are made from a different material because I use a different vendor. However, the actual production units, these are all going to be supplied on the runner over here, and they are going to be made with the same material that's seen on the other sets. These hatches here are very similar to the rear hatch that I touched upon in an earlier video in terms of the size and with the overall generic detailing. However, where the side hatches differ are with the way the piece is hinged and also with the geometry found on the lower portion. Because of the wheel well, the lower hatch on both sides have this angle cut to them and the inner section follows that contour. Just like with the other sets, however, the pieces are fully detailed with their well be details the handle, the lip, and also with the spot welds that are present on that section as well. On the external section, you'll see the hinges themselves. Of course, the weld beads are present. Same is also true for the handle with the detailing of the welds included. Of course, they are a mirror image from each other because the left and right hand units are a, well, mirror image. So for the top portion, here you get to see what the interior section looks like. This Detailing wise is basically identical to the one on the rear hatch with the same type of big steel box that the periscope would fit inside. And then there's that rubber section that goes on the outer section, which I'll touch upon that in a second. But again, you still have the recessed lip here with the weld beads. Weld beads are also found on the main mounting plate. Fastener details are integrally printed on. No other fitting needs to be done on those parts. The handle of course, is present, as is it is on the outside portion. The outer lip is there, as are the hinges. The outer periscope mount has its welds, as does the pistol port rain guard. And we even have a little padlock strip detailing right over here as well. On the other hatch, the hinges were located on the top section, so the, hinge, so the hatch can hinge upward, while obviously on the side, it's going to open in this type of a manner. The 
pistol port is not integrally printed on and it is a separate piece and this was done because you can actually model this piece in the open or closed state depending on the need of the builder who's working on one of these sets. Of course the latches are also designed to be fully functional and like I mentioned on the other one it's actually what secures the hatch to the side of the vehicle but more information on that is to come. As I touched upon before this one here is basically identical it's just a mirror image and this leads us to the headrest. The headrest on the real unit are actually a rubber component with these two metal sections that are in a metal frame that's integrally molded into the rubber base itself. This piece here is identical. It's actually the same FCL file as the one found on the back. For this one, I went ahead and had it printed out in a FDM material just to save a little bit on cost and also to, again, just basically to save on cost because printing items this large, you know, the price is out of quite quickly. However, these pieces, although they're okay for this model for production, I'm going to be going with a better material choice. The ones that you see here have been cleaned up. I went ahead and coated the surfaces with super glue and I polished them all down to a very smooth surface. So once the thing is painted, it's going to look indistinguishable to the one found on the rear. But it has all the exact same details with that large groove found on the bottom portion and the fastener mounts are, again, integrally printed on. The piece just slides directly into place with no mods really being necessary. Just line it up and Presto, the piece is fitted in place. The latches themselves do have the appropriate shape on them. And the fastener also has the little washer, which is present on the real unit. And of course, just like with the other parts, the latches themselves are a mirror image due to the way they need to lock onto the vehicle's armor section. The next thing to point out is this sprue here where we have all of the various hinges. Of course, they are pre-welded. We have pins for the hinges, the pistol ports, as well as the pistol port knobs. Of course, this will all be seen in better detail once the units are fully assembled and painted. What also is included with the set, but it's not seen on the table right here, is a length of wire to be rolled into a spring, which is for the bottom section, but more on that is also going to come as the video progresses. The next new parts to mention are the visors and also the pistol ports themselves. These are for the remaining visor and pistol ports that are located all along the vehicle's hull. These of course are all 3D printed and as for the visors this is made with the exact same STL file that's found on the hatches so it's going to keep with its continuity. You'll notice that it not only has the frames but the little strap-on points for the prisms. The prisms are also going to be included with the set. It's going to be supplied with a piece of clear Lexan plastic, which you will need to cut to shape and then position into their appropriate locations. To do this, a template is going to be supplied that's going to be a self-adhering template. So all you gotta do is stick it to the plastic and then just cut around the piece. Once you have the plastic to the appropriate shape, you simply just peel off the protective film and you're ready for installation. But more information on that, of course, is to come as the series goes on. Not only do you have enough of these pieces for the periscopes themselves, but I also supplied quite a few extras in case one or two were to get lost. Another component that's supplied with this set is the pistol port components that we have here. You'll notice that we have all of the pistol ports along with the rain guards and we have a little donut type object so that you can secure it to the vehicle and still have it function. These pieces here are primarily for exterior use. They are absent their interior detailing. So for this particular build here, something like this is going to be perfectly fine because there's no point having other interior details that you're really not going to see outside of the hatches, of course. But this component is listed on the ECA catalog along with all the other ones I'm gonna be mentioning in this video, as well as the ones I already just mentioned in the past. The next bit of equipment that I'm going to be mounting to the model this time are the fuel filler caps. On the V100, they're located on the bow nose section and they consist of the following components. You see here the fuel filler cap itself with a little integral welded on handle. And then there are these two other little bosses and fasteners. On the real unit, this would be a chain retain piece, and the chain is something that's going to be supplied with the sets. Although, right now, it's not shown because that's something that I'm going to be adding to the build 
you know, towards the end of the project. The components here are a new addition to the ECA catalog. However, the production ones are going to be slightly different from these ones over here, as these ones here are just pre-production samples. So the material and the layout is going to be a little bit different compared to the ones that are going to be production units. However, that's not going to stop me from getting these units installed onto the model at this point. And after a few minutes of cutting and gluing, you can see the sides starting to flesh out with the detailings that I just mentioned. So starting from the rear, we have that engine hatch. Currently, this is going through its painting. At the moment, it just has its base coat of olive drab, but it's really more or less like a primer. Once I go ahead and touch up a few areas, I'll go ahead and add the weathering to the section over here, and that'll complete. I could then fit it permanently. The next bit of equipment is this little duct that we have here, which I'll bring the camera in closer later on in the video, so you get to see some of the detailing on that, and that's something that's noteworthy because it's going to be part of the rear engine hatch set. Here we have the side hatch over here, at the moment just temporarily pinned in place with this plastic rod, but it is fully functional, as you can see. From here, I'm just waiting for the adhesives to fully set for the hinges, once the glues are dry, I could pop the pins, and I could progress with the painting, weathering, and the final detailing of both of these components. And that brings us to this area here, which are the periscope inserts, as well as the pistol ports. With the camera readjusted, you can get a better view of both of these sections here. These are fitted in place, and to do that, you actually have to cut out sections of the armor so that the piece can plug directly in. With the way the sets work, well, let me just go ahead and quickly snip one of them off the sprue so I could quickly show you guys. With the visor snipped off and I flip it to the other side, you get to see how the unit needs to be mounted in place. There is a bit of an inset over here. Of course, this is necessary for the piece of Lexan to fit into place at the tail end of the project, but you see this little inset needs to be carved into, or I should say cut into the side of the armor plate. This is done with just marking it with a pencil and just going at it with a file until the piece finally fits where it needs to go. For the pistol port, this is something that's done a little bit easier. You just kind of drill a small little hole and then the piece plugs into place. One thing that's, uh, I should say a feature I touched upon before is that these are fully functional. And if I go ahead and pivot them out of the way, you'll see that they work as they do on the real units. The pieces are designed to have a retention unit placed into the back of it, which of course is supplied on the 3D printed part. And once in place, or should say once glued in place, the piece can pivot, but it won't ever fall out. The hole is carefully marked and drilled into the side of the armor plate, as it is of course on the real one. And here you can see the splash guard put into this location here, and this just simply glues on to the appropriate location, keeping all the detailing where it needs to be. If I can't, or I should say, if I pan the camera a little bit to the right, you can see the hatch well that was added after the hinges were placed. The little hatch rim was fabricated on uh, the same length of plastic strip that I touched upon earlier for the top rim and was bent to shape and glued to this location much along the lines as I touched upon in another earlier video where the rear hatch was affixed to the rear section. So that's basically all there is for this side over here. I'm going to flip the model over so I can just rinse, wash, and repeat. Plus, I'm going to then be able to focus on the bow where we have some more stuff that's going to be fitted in place. Right below the hatch, we have a hatch stop which is found right here in this section. The hatch stop on the V100 family is this unique design here where it's a guard that emerges from the hull and then there are two support straps that are welded in place. For the model here, instead of going with a 3D print unit for this, I saved a little bit of money and just opted to fabricate them out of lengths of brass rod. The brass rod was basically just bent to the appropriate shape and the two other sections were soldered in place. This was done also to the opposite side of the vehicle. Once the hatch is fitted in place, and when I open it up, you'll see exactly how this system functions. On the very top portion, we have another bit of brass rod, but this is just a simple handle. This was bent to the appropriate shape with the appropriate size, and then just fastened to the vehicle. One other thing that I added to both the top and bottom brass work was I sculpted a little bit of weld beads in the locations where they make contact with the vehicle. 
Shifting to the rear corner here of the vehicle, you get to see some of the other details that were added, namely the pistol port and the visor, which I touched upon earlier. However, you can also see I sculpted a weld bead in this location over here, as this is found on the real V100, and it's also true for not just this side, but it's present on the opposite side as well. Sliding forward takes to the front details. Note with the amount of weld beads that are present on this area over here, with the way the V100 hulls were designed, the front section was a mosaic of sorts that were puzzle fitted together and then welded in place. All the weld beads that you see here are present on the actual production, or I should say the real V100s that I've been using as reference. The visor and the pistol port, uh, there's no real reason to mention that any further. However, here we have the filler cap. The unit was mounted in the location that we see here, and the way you see it is how it would look on the actual vehicle. The filler cap is a very low profile unit where it's either flush or sticks up just slightly above the surface of the plate, which is exactly how I rendered it on this model. This is going to be a mirror image on the opposite side, and it's one of the more unique and distinctive aspects found on the V100 vehicle. Carry on takes us to the front area that we have here. So we have two more visors as well as a center pistol port. And you can see that at this time I fixed two lift rings that are present on the front of the vehicle. These lift rings are the same 3D printed ones that I touched upon in the previous video where they come in a set of four and two get fixed to the rear while the other two are mounted right here at the vehicle's nose. In the next video update I'm going to be fleshing out this area here a bit further with the remainder of the details, but of course this is something that's going to be touched upon in the next video. With all of these pieces now secured to the model, the next thing to do before I can secure on the hatches is to get all these locations here painted with the base coat. This obviously is done because once the hatches are fitted, you're going to have a really hard time getting to these areas here without the risk of potential collateral damage by getting overspray on the hatches themselves. So at this point here, I could go ahead and airbrush everything and even possibly weather some of the stuff and not worry about any sort of problems with the hatches. Of course, once the paint dries, the hatches can get mounted right afterwards. On the hatches themselves, you notice I went ahead and masked them up. The reason why I did that is that the inside here is filled with small little particulate just from all the cutting and removing that has been going on with this build since the beginning. Although I do vacuum up and blow out the inside with compressed air, there is still the risk of there being one loose particle on the inside that can turn around and bite you when you're airbrushing the area over here. The last thing you need is for some rogue particulate to fly out and land right there on the side of the model, making your life now just a little bit more complicated because now you have to do some cleanup on those locations there. So by masking them up, this is one way to mitigate that as much as possible. The side does have some debris on it, but I'm going to quickly hit that with a tack cloth, make sure it's nice and polished down, and then I could go ahead and add the paintwork. That's going to be applied via the airbrush, and it's the same base color that I've used on the lower extremities, and also the rear section that I touched upon in the last video. With the sides of the hull painted, it's then time for the installation of the side doors. And here are the side doors fully painted and weathered and are about to be installed onto the model. The hatches are fully painted and weathered with my usual painting and weathering techniques, which will include dry brushing, air brushing, and some filters for good measure. Here you can see the lower portion of the hatch here. The little handles are fully functional and are what's going to be used to actually keep this thing to the side of the model and prevent it from flopping out. With the location, with the shape of the V100 hull, this piece here really has a habit on swinging downward. So the latches being fully functional is something that is really beneficial. Of course, the same is true for the opposite side as well. And that brings us to the top portion of the hatches. Here you can see what they look like with that head protector section in place. The little knob was painted to replicate 
a shiny plastic, which was true to form on the real units, or at least the units I've been using as reference. And again, the latch here is fully functional. Same is true for the one on the opposite side. Of course, the paintwork is only done on the inside. The outside just has a simple coat of the spray paint olive drab that I used as a, acting more or less as a primer. But of course, this is going to be painted along with the remainder of the exterior towards the end of the build. And after a few minutes of fiddling with things, all of the hatches are secured to the model at this point. Let's bring the camera in closer so you get a better idea on how everything looks. Starting with the lower hatch, here you can see what it looks like in the open position. The hatch is resting on that brass hatch stop that I touched upon earlier. Also, with the unit now fitted in place, you really get a sense of why the features are what they are on these pieces. So, starting with this portion over here, you can see this handle that's present on this area. Well, the handle does two purposes. First, it allows, obviously, for someone to open and close the hatch with a little bit of convenience. But the second thing that it does is that it acts as a step up so that someone can put their foot over here in order to climb into the vehicle. Just like with the hatch on the rear, the lower section here has a spring that's used as a counterbalance and it prevents the hatch from swinging down too fast causing damage and it also assists with the opening of the unit. The Spring detailing here is made out of solid core electrical wire as it is on the one on the rear. And with the way I designed it, it actually has some buffeting capabilities to it. Yeah, that's a word. We're just going to roll with that. <laughs> the, the unit is coiled up and then you can see one portion of the spring entering into the side hinge over here. The hinge has a hole integrally printed on and it's also found on the real units for this actual application. That's so the spring can just slide into this area over here and then the other portion of the spring would be resting on the hull. Well on the model here like I did on the one on the rear I actually drilled a hole into the plate so that I have the wire bent in a certain way so it actually protrudes into the model. That portion is glued in place and because of that the spring here is actually doing a real job where it actually does somewhat slow the hatch openings ascension. The piece also keeps it in the close position like you see here. It's not just flopping around, but obviously if I was moving this thing around, it would definitely do so. This length of coiled wire, by the way, is included with the ECA hatch set. Jumping back to the opening feature of the hatch, because of the location, as you can see here, the unit just wants to swing open. Now, this, again, has to do with the geometry of the vehicle and also with the location that this thing is mounted on with the way the hinges are designed. So, in order to keep this thing in place and prevent it from opening up, I went ahead and added functional latches. Again, something I already mentioned earlier. Well, the hatches, of course, are used for detailing. It's a nice little detail element to have working features, but on this portion over here, it's also functional because I need to use it to keep this thing in place and well here we go I just go ahead and I pivot the latch on the inside and once it's locked in place this thing here isn't going anywhere. One feature that's found on this pattern of vehicle that makes this really really viable is with the way the hatch is designed. With the V100 the hatch is divided in two and they open up separately from one another. On the original prototype version of the Commando, it actually only had a single smaller hatch in this area over here, but at some point they decided to open it up to aid with the enter and exit of this vehicle from the sides. With this design over here, you can operate the vehicle with the hatch partially open for one reason or another. The other portion of the hatch, you can see right over here, and just hinges sideways. And unlike the hatch on the bottom, the one on the top has no other spring-assisted feature to it. It's just loosely hanging on its hinges, and it doesn't really need any sort of counterbalance system. Of course, the side hatches are not the only hatch that is secured to the vehicle at this time. The other, of course, is the rear side axis engine hatch. Here you get to see what the unit looks like, fully painted and weathered, and of course, the same exact painting and weathering techniques were utilized on this that were touched upon for the other hatches that I mentioned earlier. With the unit fitted in place, you get to see how the unit closes up. The unit does close pretty well, however, the 
latch is functional on this unit too. In order to close this hatch, I basically leave the latch in the open position. I swing it up and then I could go ahead and from the inside, secure the latch in place. Now, in case anyone's wondering, yes, John, but how would you do that on the real vehicle? Well, keep in mind, on the real vehicle, in order to get access to that latch, you need to open up the two engine hatches that are on the top portion of the vehicle, which is something that I am going to be adding, but of course, this is going to be mentioned in an upcoming video update. Once the latch is secured in place, this hatch here also isn't going anywhere. Bouncing back to the visor and the pistol ports here, you get to see what they look like fully completed. Well, not so much the visor. There is a clear piece of Lexan and their retention fasteners, which are going to be added. But of course, this is going to be done towards the end of the project. But more information on that is to come. On the pistol port, as I touched upon before, the rear section was painted with the color that I'm using as the base coat. And the bottom portion or I should say the inside portion of the pistol ports were primed as well. The color I used was that Krylon olive drab spray paint that I used on the hatches, but again, I've already mentioned. The paintwork was the only thing needed before I could get these pieces permanently mounted in place. Once mounted, you can see that they are fully functional and they open up pretty nicely, revealing the pistol port itself. It's a nice little bit of extra detailing and a little bit of extra functionality to add to this model. As you can see, a lot of progress has been made to this model. And if I was to put a percentage mark on it, I'd say it's about 45, maybe 50% complete. From here, the next thing I'm going to be focusing on is the front area, as well as the top portion, flushing out the remainder of the details. This project here is really coming to an end. The only thing that's really keeping it from accelerating too fast is me having to research and develop new components and also waiting for prints to be manufactured. Of course, the cost of the prints is also a prohibiting factor, but you know, I don't want to bore you with those details. Having said that, I really see this project hopefully getting completed by mid to the end of summer and once completed, it's going to be a really, really cool addition in my collection and it's one that I cannot wait to finally get completed. However, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, and I think that's a perfect point to end this video here. So with that, that wraps up this project update video for this 1-6 scale scratch-built Cadillac Gauge V100 armor car. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where it's a great way to keep up to date on new posted content being 1-6 scale project update videos like this one over here, or the other smaller scale model showcase videos that frequently get posted to this channel. Another way to keep in loop a new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There, I have more photographs of this particular build that have been posted since the project start, as well as the other smaller and larger scale builds that have been seen on this channel previously. Also, don't forget to swing by eastcoastarmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks again, and I'll be seeing you all again on the next one. Till then.